Hi, I'm psychologist Dr. Ali Matu. If you're like most people, you probably think OCD looks like this. I just love getting them all in the right order. And maybe you have said this. Oh my gosh, I am so OCD. I have to check my alarm like three times before I'm able to fall asleep at night. And you have probably heard someone say this. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to be a bit more OCD about this, okay? None of this is OCD. What OCD really looks like is this. What's happening here? How does the mind of someone who has OCD work and what can be done to help them? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up and get some context first. A little over 1% of people have experienced OCD in the past year. That's way less common than most anxiety disorders. So no, you statistically probably don't have OCD. But you might. Maybe that's why you clicked this video, or maybe you love someone or know someone who has OCD. Now, while OCD is not that common, it is a very serious problem. About half the people, half the people who have OCD experience severe impairment from it. What that means is everyday things like going to the bathroom, returning messages, going around town, being at school, being at work, being around the people we care about feels so difficult, becomes so anxiety provoking, and it takes so much time when you have OCD. When we say, oh, I'm so OCD, but we're really talking about double checking and wanting things to be organized and clean, we belittle the experience of OCD and the serious difficulties that people with this disorder have in their daily lives. Obsessive compulsive disorder is not a choice. It's not a preference. It's not being anal. OCD is a biologically based problem. And while we're not 100% sure what causes it, we know it's not your fault that you have it. It's something that probably started in childhood and got a lot worse during your teenage and young adult years. The neuroscience here can get really complicated really quickly, but to simplify it all, the parts of your brain that are responsible for rewards and error detection, movement, memories, they're not really communicating that well with each other. Because the brain of someone with OCD is wired a little bit differently, they're unsure if a simple task is complete or not. For most people, when you turn off a light switch, your brain registers that the task is complete and you're able to move forward with your life. But for people with OCD, they flip a light switch and then there's still some anxiety in their head. And your mind tries to make sense of that anxiety. It creates a story around it. Well, maybe I didn't turn it off all that way because there's some dust stuck in there. And if I don't do this again, well, maybe something bad could happen. Like there could be an electrical fire and the whole house might burn down. This is what our brains do so well, create narrative and stories to make sense out of the chaos of the world. Except in the case of OCD, they're trying to make sense of anxiety that doesn't need to be there in the first place. This is why people with OCD experience thoughts, images, impulses that don't make much sense and are very hard to get out of their head. That's the O in OCD, obsessions, and they can include anything from this list right over here. To try to reduce the anxiety from obsessions, people engage in compulsions, which can include anything from this list right over here. It's usually doing something over and over again, like a ritual, until it feels right and it feels complete, which does reduce anxiety for a little bit, but eventually that anxiety comes back when you have OCD. This brings us to the defining element of OCD doubt. People with OCD get consumed by doubt. Doubt becomes something that is so hard to get out of your head, and doubt starts spinning these narratives that keep people feeling trapped. Did I do that the right way? What if I didn't? Was that really a bump on the road, or did I just run someone over? Did I touch the counter at Starbucks, and does that mean I have AIDS? Did I say that prayer the wrong way? Am I going to hell now? I need to keep doing this till it feels right. I need to say the right numbers till it feels right. That doesn't feel right. Need to do it again. Need to do it again. I need to do it again. The doubt OCD creates takes up so much time from 
from your day. It makes it so hard to do the most basic things. One of my patients called OCD the thief of time, and this doubt can end up creeping into every aspect of your life, consume your life, and make it so hard to get even the most basic stuff done. This is the part of the video where you might start wondering, do I have OCD? And the reality is most of the types of thoughts that people with OCD struggle with, these thoughts enter the minds of people who don't have OCD as well. Back when I lived in New York City and I walked onto a subway platform, I'd always get this thought of, it would be really bad if I just fell into the subway tracks. And when my daughter was first born, I remember holding her and doing laundry, thinking it would be really bad if I just put my daughter into the laundry machine. And in those early days of the pandemic, I would just hear someone let out the lightest little cough, and then I'd wonder, did I just get COVID? Just having these thoughts doesn't mean you have OCD. We all get them from time to time, and you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts might be scary, but they're not dangerous. But people with OCD deeply struggle with these thoughts. They often spend more than an hour a day thinking about them, and they become obsessions for them that also develop into doubt, doubt, and more doubt. This is all very different than someone who struggles with everyday worries about your health, your friends and family, work, school, money, relationships, stuff like that. If you struggle with those types of worries, well, then you might be experiencing generalized anxiety disorder, which is a very different problem. But if you're someone who gets obsessed with these thoughts or images that are very difficult to get out of your head and you feel compelled to do things over and over again until they feel right, then you might have OCD and there is hope. There are a number of medications that have been shown to be effective at helping people with OCD. Most of them target the serotonin system, which is similar to how antidepressants work, but when they're prescribed for OCD, they're prescribed at a higher dose than they are for depression. Then there's cognitive behavioral therapy, specifically exposure and response prevention, one of the most effective treatments for OCD. In this treatment, you learn how to stick with the situation that produces all that doubt, produces that uncertainty, and you learn how to stick with it instead of engaging in your compulsions. It works because your brain is really plastic. That means it's open to learning from new experiences and it can change. And through exposure response prevention, we take all those different parts of the brain that are highly active and not really communicating with each other and kind of cool them down. If your compulsion is to wash your hands five times, maybe you start by corrupting that compulsion by washing it four times, or you don't wash at all, or you purposely touch something that you believe could be contaminated and learn to move forward despite the doubt. Usually people start this once a week going in to see a therapist who's an expert in this type of treatment, but if you're really struggling, you might need half day, full day treatment, or maybe even something like an inpatient treatment where you're staying at a hospital for a few weeks until you really have some sense of control over this problem. Exposure and response prevention can be difficult for some people to do, so fortunately there are other cognitive behavioral therapy alternatives like acceptance and commitment therapy where you really change your relationship with what's going on inside of you and inference-based CBT where you learn to deconstruct that narrative that OCD is creating around all that doubt. I'll do a deeper dive into these treatments in my next video. To learn more about how anxiety works, check out this right over here.